Welcome to this video on object oriented programming in Python and specifically looking at this big word called encapsulation. Now, when you think of encapsulation, you might be thinking of the English definition of the word capsule, but the English definition for it would just be something enclosed or as if in a capsule, and we have a capsule here. Now, it's interesting, when you meet a human being, you don't actually have any access to their genetic functions or know what's going on inside of them. You just you meet with their interface and you have you interface, so to speak, with what you what you can, what they allow you to see. Encapsulation is similar. And the key word really that you're looking at with encapsulation is the, the, the term information hiding. It is one of the core principles of object oriented programming and it's to do with hiding the internal implementation details of a class. So we're going to be looking at these things as along with access specification types such as private, public and protected and we will discuss how Python is actually quite different from some of the high level languages in this respect. Now to begin, let's give you a bit of a, a metaphor. Suppose you were driving along in your car, a beautiful country road and suddenly you saw somebody, an old woman on, on the road, and you needed to brake. Now, as a driver, all you need to do is just press the brake. You don't actually have to know what's happening inside the brake, the internal processes, the complex information which is actually involved in braking is hidden from you. And thank goodness for that. So as humans, we make use of many tools provided to us by you know, companies, parents, teachers, and we don't actually care but what's happening behind the scenes. And this, effectively, is what encapsulation is. It's one of the fundamental pillars of OOP, and it refers to the bundling of data with the methods that operate on that data. So we've, in a sense, we've been doing that anyway, but more specifically, it's used to hide the values or state of structured data. A simple, uh, more sort of exam if you're dealing with exam definition would be, it's just to hide the internal implementation, the complex details of a class, and it provides an interface for people to communicate with the class, such as through the methods. Data hiding and abstraction, so that's a good definition. Another very important concept is the concept of access specifiers. Now obviously if you're encapsulating something, if you want to hide it, there's different levels of access. It's important to realize that Python doesn't have real, as far as what, as what we mean, real private methods. It's just convention. So you can still access variables. However, it's, it's something that is allowed or you can actually do for the sake of development and for consistency and convention. The naming conventions are, so you have private, protected and public and we'll have a look at a real world example in a minute just so that comes alive to you and we'll look at how these can be done in Python. Suppose you had a really, really, really deep secret and you'd written it down on a piece of paper. There are three things you could do with that piece of paper. There are three levels of access. You could store the piece of paper with, you know, remembering it's your great greatest secret, <laughs> in your bedroom or you could just put it somewhere in your house, or you could just stick it on the road, on a, on a busy London road, for instance. Now, these are analogous to private, protected, and public. If it was in your bedroom, only you would have access to it, you being, in programming terms, let's think, the developer. If it was in your house, it would be protected, and you and anyone in your house, now remember house would be analogous, so to speak, to, to a class. If you put it on the road, it would be accessible to anyone and that would be declared as public. Like we said before, unlike many other languages, Python does not actually force access specifiers, but they can be used as a naming convention because it's been used by developers over the years. So if you declare something as private, you're informing developers and you're reminding yourself that this particular attribute is only to be used within that class and nowhere else. In practice, 
like I said, the attribute can be accessed as Python as a language doesn't actually force this. Here's an example of an access specifier, which we're going to look at in a minute. And really the key that you need to remember is private is implemented with a double underscore protected with a single underscore public is as you've been doing. So let's have a look at some existing code over here. Plenty of notes for you to read in your own time. Now we have a class called car. This is a completely public attribute. It's all of them technically are public, but this is just there. And it can be accessed anywhere by any other class, etc. So number of wheels four. Now here we've declared a protected attribute, and we've done so by having a double or just a single underscore. So the color of this beautiful car is black. And here we have a private attribute, so this is the highest level of secrecy, double underscore secret code 07. Now, to demonstrate how this works, I've created an object called car. Obviously, that would be printed to the screen. But what would happen, let me just get rid of that for now, what would happen if I printed or tried to print this attribute? Let's have a look. It says car object has no attribute secret code and the reason for that is because we've declared it private. Now in practice we can actually get around that by type by understanding how Python works behind the scene. I'm not going to show you how that's done but it's worth knowing that in Python you can get around these things. Having said that for now if I remove that and make it public the secret code would be printed along with this public attribute. So you can play around with this code, think about how it works, practice and declare yourself different types of protected private public access specifiers. There's plenty of comments at the beginning of the code so you can look around and think about what you what you need to understand in your context.